I love working with Power BI. The tool really improved a lot over the last couple of years. But as a Power BI developer, I use the tool every single day. And there are still many little issues that are really frustrating to me, where I think, why is this still not there? Or why is this still so basic? Or why is this not fixed? Now, in this video, I'm going to highlight five of these issues. Let's dive in. Now, the goal of this video is not for me to complain. I just want to highlight a few small things that I think can easily be improved and that will make the life of every Power BI developer better. And also in terms of prioritization, I think sometimes the Power BI development team could do it a little bit better instead of focusing on adding features to a tree map, focus on, well, one of the next five things first. Now let's start with the first one, setting the column width in tables and matrix visuals. Now, sounds like an obvious, easy feature. However, we're still kind of limited because here we have two options. Either we rely on the auto sizing feature. So if you go here to formatting and then column headers options, you see auto size width, which means it sets the width of the column automatically based on the values that are inside of that column. That's nice. However, I want these columns to be a little bit wider. Maybe you have more space that you want to fill up. Well, then you can go in between the column headers and then manually drag them to the right. However, this is not really exact. And also when once I get new months, for example, June, well, it still relies on that auto sizing feature there. So hmm, not perfect. What I want to have is that we are able to say, OK, make the width of the columns 100 pixels and also for the new columns that get added. Now, and that's not possible. Now we have weird workarounds. For example, what you could do at the moment is to go here to the main measure, which in my case is sales. And then I change the formatting to just a bunch of zeros. So let's say 10 zeros, press enter. And now you see it automatically resizes all of the columns because the auto sizing is turned on. And now I'm going to turn that off. So I go back here to formatting and then column headers, turn the auto sizing off. All right. And then go back to the formatting of that selected measure and change it back to currency. Now it works. However, it's a little bit clunky and I think this can be improved very easily. All right, let's continue with number two. Now for this one, we go to the Fabric Ideas community platform where you can submit and vote on ideas that the Power BI development team then can work on. All right. Here, you see a lot of these suggested ideas have already been implemented. And if I sort them by number of votes, then the next open one that's planned is the custom order for Legend. Well, it's there. It's already planned since 2015. And this one is about easily changing the sorting order of the Legend. And actually, it improved a little bit. Now, sorting in Power BI is probably more complex compared to other tools. Now let's have a look. So here I have a stacked bar chart with a breakdown by product. And in the legend, I have different countries. All right. Now, if I want to change the sorting, I can just go here in the top right corner. And then here we have sort legend and I can sort the legend by country in descending or ascending order. That just means that it sorts it alphabetically. Now, that's in some cases fine. However, I want to be able to do more than that. Now, a second option that we have is to go to formatting and then we go here to bars and then make sure that all of the series are selected. Then here we have layout where we can also sort by value. All right, that's pretty cool, right? That already gives us more options. However, what if you want to do a manual sort? Well, then I want to be able to easily change the sorting either from here or I want to drag and drop the items in the order that I would like to show them. Well, that's not possible. What you need to do in Power BI is to go here to the table view and then add a column like country sort, which returns a number for the sorting order for, in this case, the country. And then you can go to country, select sort by column, and then say that the country name column should be sorted by the country sort column. All right, now, and then we have our preferred manual sorting order, meaning now I can go back and then turn off sort by value. All right, go here to the three little dots, sort the legend by country, and now it would not sort it 
alphabetically anymore, but it would sort the legend in ascending order based on that sort by column. Now, that works. However, it's a lot of effort. And also, well, for the end user, well, they cannot do that. So how should the alternative look like? Well, let's have a look at Tableau, one of the main competitive tools to Power BI. So here in Tableau, I have the same stack bar chart. And if I want to change the sorting order of the countries, the only thing that I need to do is drag and drop them in the order that I want them to be. So if I want to have the United States, let's say here in the middle, I can just drag and drop them over there and they go to the middle. That's pretty cool and <laughs> much easier than what you need to do in Power BI. Now, again, for me, it might seem like a small feature to implement. Now, I can imagine that for the Power BI development team, this is a big thing to implement, but it would make our lives a lot better. All right, good. Let's continue with feature number three. If we just scroll down a little bit more, then we see another highly voted on idea, which is to apply filter selections automatically, meaning to set the slices selection automatically based maybe on a DAX measure that you write. For example, a slicer with different dates where always the date of the day is selected. Well, that's not really possible because it just has the selection of when the Power BI report was saved. Now, is it not possible at all? Well, there are some workarounds. You could, for example, create instead of a date, a today item that is then always selected. So in that sense, it would be a little bit dynamic. But for that, you have to, again, come up with a whole workaround where you add a column to your day table that then returns today for the today date. And it's very clunky. Now, this could be made a lot easier. And it has also many other interesting applications. Think, for example, of a slicer where you have different teams or departments, and you want it always to select the team department of the person that's looking at the report. Well, you could write a DAX measure that checks, oh, this is the user, he or she works in that department, select that department. That would be awesome. All right, so a powerful feature that would really help the Power BI developer a lot. All right, now let's continue with the fourth one. Let's stay on the topic of slicers because slicers actually have improved quite a bit over the last couple of months. We have now totally new slicers. We have the button slicer, we have the list slicer, we have the text slicer. However, there's one type of slicer that is actually used quite a bit that didn't get love at all over the last couple of years. And that is the drop-down slicer. Now, a drop-down slicer is basically just a standard slicer that you change to a drop-down by going to slicer settings and changing the style to drop-down. All right, now here you see that the options are really limited compared to what we are able to change for the newer button slicers. Now, just have a look over here. We have values, we can give them a different color, change the border color, change the background color, and that's kind of it, right? So how to make it look good in your design? Uh, you're, you have to work with so many limitations, right? So if you have a standard report like this one, you see there's not much that you can change to make it look better than this. Now, what I would like to be able to do is, for example, change the shape like this so that you could have these little pills. That would already be a huge improvement. Or to be able to set the frame of that box. Like now, there's no way to change that frame. It is always this light gray color. Now, Little things like this. And I think there are tons of other formatting features that could be added that would make this slicer so much nicer. And again, a small feature, but it's used by so many people every single day. And instead of focusing on this, we get extra features to a tree map that almost nobody uses. All right, good. You got the point. Let's move on to number five, fonts. Why are we so limited in Power BI when it comes to fonts? The font type determines a lot about how the report looks like. So it's really important that we have some flexibility there. But if we check the fonts that we can choose from, well, let's go here, for example, then you see there's not that much to choose from. And those that you can choose from, well, many of them are bad options that nobody would go for. Take, for example, Comic Sans or fonts that are, well, having a different width for values so that 
the, your values start to jump basically if you start to use uh, certain fonts then you're limited to just a few font types now i know that some people will say yeah but in your theme you can set the font to anything you like however that font also needs to be installed on the device that the end user is using to look at your report. And if that font is not installed on that device, you have a problem. It defaults to Times no a New Roman or something. And then uh, your report looks probably not the way that you want it to look like. So what is the solution to this? Maybe it could work like for websites so that the fonts would get downloaded when you go to a website or to your report. Right, so if we take, for example, the Power BI website, well, over here, if I open up the developer tools, then here you see the fonts and the backup fonts. Now, if I open this up, then you see it downloads from a certain URL, the font, when you go to this website, all right? You could do the same in a theme, probably. And in that way, we would have endless options for fonts and we could use company fonts as well. Now, I'm pretty sure that this idea is also here in the ideas list. Now, let's look for it. So let's search for it. Custom font. Let's see what pops up. And then here we can sort either by best match or kudos. Then you see we have one with almost 2000 votes. And you see, indeed, this idea is there since 2015. It's under review. However, it's not being implemented. I wonder why. Because it would make the tool so much better. <laughs> I sometimes I wonder how things are prioritized in terms of development. And also, when it comes to these other ideas from before, for example, the custom order for the legend was also an idea from 2015, which is still marked as planned. Or if I scroll down a little bit further to apply the filter selections automatically, well, it needs more votes, but it already has four and a half thousand votes. And the idea with the most votes, well, has eight and a half thousand or 8.8, .8, which is not that much of a difference. Why does the other one still need more votes? So is it not being actively looked at? I'm just wondering, what is going on here? Now for this video, I limited myself to five issues that really frustrate me on a daily basis, which I hope are not too difficult to implement, the low hanging fruit, let's say. However, there's always more stuff to complain about. For example, bookmarks management has been the same for the last 10 years. Maybe it's time for an update there as well, or dynamically switching the themes. One of the ideas I saw in the community would also be a lovely, however, maybe a bit more difficult. Now, let me know your thoughts, what frustrates you on a daily basis, put it in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. And if you want to see me actually using Power BI, then check out these two videos. If you want to build Power BI reports with me from beginning to end and really level up your design skills, check out my training over here. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.